It's an honour to be here with you all to say a few words about why reflecting on the Lausanne Treaty matters. For the devastating oppression of the Kurdish people enabled in its wake, and importantly, it provides an opportunity to reflect on the incredible resilience and transformation of the Kurdish movement for self-determination ever since. For the Armenians, Kurds, Arabs, and other communities who had invested so much in Wilson's rhetoric of self-determination, Lausanne was the crime of the century. The Lausanne Treaty set in motion a century of devastating state violence and structural oppressions against the, Tur against the Kurds in Turkey, Iraq, Iran and Syria in different ways, but all marked by colonial relations of dehumanisation, forced assimilation and violent concerted efforts to destroy Kurdish cultural identity. The West international law has failed my people. The Treaty of Lausanne is a chemical bomb on the Kurdish foundation. Since the creation of this treaty, over 5,000 lives were lost in Halabja. Over 200,000 were lost in Anfal. Over 40,000 lives were lost in Turkey. And these numbers don't even scratch the surface of it. Denied the opportunity to practice centuries of cultures and traditions, ethnic cleansing has erased the very foundations of the Kurdish community. Human rights for Kurdistan is a paper tiger of international law, implicit in writing and fruitless in action. 100 years of denial, oppression and genocide, signing of the treaty in 1923, hoping that Kurds would just assimilate and be quiet and be forgotten. 100 years will pass and the Kurds will forget their language, culture and history. We are here. We are here in our cultural clothes, learning our history and language. We are learning about our ancestors and the lands we come from. Therefore, within my mother tongue, I welcome you all today. Havano hun hemu herhatne. But as the 19th century British politician and former Prime Minister Lord Palmerston famously said in a speech to the British Parliament, Britain has no eternal enemies, no perpetual enemies, no eternal allies and no perpetual enemies. Our interests, however, are eternal and perpetual. Well, the Kurds also have their saying, we have no friends but the mountains. And perhaps because of this, the Kurds quickly came to become suspicious of the British real plan in the area, which was to grab the land with the richest oil deposits and put in place local rulers who would serve its interests. The Treaty of Lausanne in 1926 formalized this conquest and gave the green light to Turkey to inflict years of brutal repression and genocidal campaign against the Kurds, the Armenians and other minorities. Well, what lessons could we possibly draw from this, this story? Today, I think we still live in a world which is substantially divided between a few rich and powerful nation states which dominate. And we should never see these forces, these powers as true friends of the people whatever they claim. But nor should we be blind to the oppression by less powerful states like Turkey, Russia, Iran, Iraq, Syria, which have all served as prison houses of nations in their own right. In this regard, we also need to have more uh, recognition and appreciation for the contribution, the new thinking by Kurdish leader Abdullah Öcalan in finding, in seeking out a solution to this contradiction that is posed for the multiple nationalities encompassed within currently within single states and the solution that was previously outlined by Dr. Santos of democratic confederalism.